your sons. Exodus 31, verse 2 says, See, I have called by name Bezaliel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works in the work of gold and in, gold, and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones to set them in the carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, behold, have I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ashamah, the, the tribe of Dan, of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom that they make all that I have commanded them. You notice different things for different people, different families. God set this thing up that had different duties, laws. This is what you're supposed to do. In Numbers 4, he tells them in verse 4, this is, shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle. So even the, those who are in uh, the tribes of Aaron, or within the tribe of Aaron, the Levites, now he finds, guess what? I've got different things for different ones to do. I've got something for the sons of Kohath to do within this. The sons of Kohath shall come and bear it. He, te he tells them, as far as the vessels of the sanctuary, but they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath and the tabernacle of the congregation. Their burden, their job, was to carry stuff from one place to another place. That was their job. Doesn't sound like much of a job. Sounds like somebody's like a, a, a truck driver. And they're saying, well, that's not a big time job. Do it without it. Live without it. God may have called you to just be a, to, to drive a truck for an evangelist and to, and to pull a tra tent trailer. And you're happy doing that because that's all. You put the tent up, after the tent's put up, you back off and do nothing. Wouldn't that be something? All you got to do now is go and pray and, and have a good time. Go do what you normally would do, witness to people. And just live your life because your duty in the thing would have been done. That's the sons of Kohath. Their duty was done once the tabernacle was put up. The others had other duties. But they had a bear upon their shoulders. It's a hard work. It's a heavy work. Somebody has to. There's a lot to say about in the Bible about those who try to perform duties that are not their duties to perform, and I'm not going to go into those. But we do know Uzziah did that. And we know that uh, the sons of Eli, sons of Eli, they went in and they misused their place in the uh, temple. We know that some offered strange fire. Native and Abihu offered strange fire. They didn't do their job correctly. And God takes that very, very serious. And so now we find not only the duties, we find their position in the family. We find uh, their performances in the family. But not only do we find this, but now we find the promises. You'll see and the promises. And the promises. The service of God. And the promises. There's promises, provision in the family. You do what you're supposed to do, and God takes care of you. That is the whole covenant. You live holy, don't. Don't expect, no matter what happens, guess what? It's all taken care of. Now, we're not talking eternity here. We're talking in the family, the Israelites. They had promises. And God had promised to make them a great nation. 
But what did he do? He brought them into captivity. Why did he bring them into captivity? Because of their sin. But he did, he did not bring them into the promised land. But there was a promise. And so what's he say? I'll bring your children in. Why is it that the, it took so long to fulfill the promises? Because they would not do their duties. They would not live up to their part of the covenant. And let me say, the reason God is not fulfilling the promises in your life or in my life, if first of all we need to find out where they are given to us by Him, but if He's given us a promise like peace, like grace, like joy unspeakable and full of glory, peace that passes all understanding, the reason we don't have those promises and the power of the Holy Ghost that's covenant and promises. God has promised those things that He can get glory. We get glory, and He can get glory. And because there's duties for us to perform, and because we don't perform those duties, we do not get in on the blessings of those promises. It's a sad reality. But just like Israel did not bask in the blessings of God because of unbelief, often we do not bask in the blessings of God because we do not believe. And we live in unbelief. He has helped the servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, to his seed forever. Here's what he tells in Acts chapter 3. You're the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, that thy seed shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. But Israel refuses Christ. And does not live in the blessings of Christ. Did they not reject Him? They had Him nailed to the cross. Now somebody wants to say, but it was a determinant foreknowledge of counsel in the counsel of God. He said, by wicked hands you crucified Him. God knew it would happen. But he said, Whosoever will, let him come unto me and be saved. Whosoever will, let him believe. And we desire that every one of you to show the same diligence and full assurance of the hope to the end that you be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises, Hebrews chapter 6 tells us. If you remember, these truths, there's those that inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them the end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by another. Did Abraham get in on the promise? Abraham went about, about doing his own way because it was taking so long, remember that? But God, which cannot lie, or that cannot lie, when he says he's going to do it, he's long-suffering to us, we're not willing to need to perish, but should also come to repentance. God has a promise for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's not just a promise of going to heaven and not going to hell. That is a promise for the Christian life. That is a promise for believing on Him in every area that He is going to take care of you. Then after He goes through all of this, he makes this very statement. 
who are the Father, of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Everything is fulfilled in Christ. That is the promise. That's what they were looking for. He's the promised seed. He's the promised Savior. He's the promised sovereign. He's the promised soldier that would fight the battles for them. Everything is fulfilled in Christ. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to use the word of this salvation sin. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voice of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should, he, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. Who are his witnesses unto the people? And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God had fulfilled the same unto their children, and that he had raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He had an heritage. And let me say this, in that heritage, he expressed their heritage. They had a position. They had promises. They had to perform if you do not perform the act that God has for you, ultimately, yes, because you are His, you will receive the promise. But immediately, no. You cannot live in the promise of peace when you live not performing our deeds. You cannot live in the promise of delight when we do not perform our duties. It cannot be expected. So I ask you today, are we performing our duties? Are we living for God? Are we glorifying God in our body and in our spirit which belong to Him? Are we studying to show ourselves approved unto God? Are we praying earnestly, effectually? Are we living right? Or are we so consumed with self? Because our hearts desire and pray to God is not that we be saved but that we be satisfied. And let me say this, if your heart's desire and prayer to God is not salvation of souls and glorification of the Savior, and it's all self-ordered focused, we will not bask in the blessings of God. Father, thank you for Sunday school time.